Your LinkedIn is your sales pitch, but you have to transform it from being a resume into being a personal brand. Hello and welcome to the brand new You Show, the podcast dedicated to helping you build a credible brand. I'm your host, Ryan Roten, and today's guest is Tyler Kemp from VentureTactics.com. Tyler is a marketing specialist who helps entrepreneurs and B2B sales professionals fill their pipeline, build an audience, and become influencers on LinkedIn. Tyler, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the brand new You Show. Yeah, my pleasure to be here. You and I got connected on LinkedIn, which is happening more and more these days. People are reaching out and starting to use LinkedIn, I think, in the way that it was originally intended to be used, which is good news for those of us who do use LinkedIn. And one of the big reasons I want to have you on today is because you are a huge LinkedIn user and you have a process that I know will resonate with a lot of people. However, before we get into those questions, I have one question that that I ask all of my guests (laughs) I <laughs> see you oh, smiling. Yeah. Uh, it's funny to see your reaction because you know it's coming, right? So if you could vacation in only one place for the rest of your vacation days, where would you go? You know, I, uh, I've i been thinking about this ever since we scheduled our podcast today. And uh, it's actually harder than you might think because my wife and I are not vacationers. Um, we are homebodies all the way. Um, but... What really came to my mind is Mount Prist- Mount Princeton. Mount Princeton. Now, where is where is Mount Princeton? Mount Princeton is in Colorado, and uh, the reason that I would vacation there is because of family tradition. So, once a year, every winter, my wife's family goes to Mount Princeton, and we all hang out and we jacuzzi, and it's uh, fantastic. We just hang out in hot springs, um, but. Since the number one most important thing to me is being close to family, doing things with the family, that would be my place. Um, And it's close to home. After we reached out and connected on LinkedIn and I was doing some research on you, it seems like you've spent a lot of your career to this point within marketing. Is that what your enjoyment and focus is when it comes to work? Yeah, 100%. For the last decade, just been in different positions of marketing, launched uh, my own company almost a decade ago, and then went into the marketing space working for other producers, starting in lending and working my way over to uh, software SaaS companies. And eventually relaunching a marketing company again, although we don't call ourselves an agency, we refer to ourselves more as a sales accelerator program. Um, It's something where it's really more about the sales and the marketing in the end. So what, I mean, what's that been like? So we're we're talking about your, your company, Venture Tactics. What's that road been like for you? Yeah, very, very rewarding and so much learning. I think, you know, no matter how many times I do the same stuff over and over again, right? I mean, uh, like for example, I built my career on Facebook advertising, but, um, you know, instead the direction of this podcast is probably going to be talking about LinkedIn because that's where we have ended up. But even when I launched, uh, venture tactics initially, we had a, a large, um, option. We had all these options Mm -hmm. to choose from all of these things. And, uh, what we found was that what we were doing on LinkedIn literally outperformed everything we were doing on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, all of that combined. And also it's when it's another thing to say, okay, now that I'm uh, doing this for myself, is it a process of implementing all of this stuff that I've been doing for everyone else for me? And it's, there's a challenge to that. You said something that's very interesting and I'm, I'm hearing this more and more with business owners that I speak to, which is most of us start our business off because we found like one thing that we were good at. And so we start doing that thing. And then what happens is we get a customer who says, Oh, by the way, can you do this thing too? And then you get another one who says, can you do that? And before you know it, like you have this very large service offering that is quite frankly, unsustainable. And it sounds like you were offering a a bunch of stuff to your customers in the same type of service model that most entrepreneurs get into um, when they get started. How how did you decide to take that offering and go, you know what, I'm going to, I'm just going to focus everything that we do on LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, That decision was made because of the efficacy of LinkedIn right now. So the most important thing to me, and I think the most scary thing, if you, and I think any agency owner would agree with me, the most scary thing about having an agency is always making sure that you are, you know, 
providing this 10x return for your client to make sure that whatever they're paying you, it's a very performance-based industry where someone's not going to pay you in marketing if you're not producing a certain amount of dollars on the back end. And so the other thing is there's all of these things we could potentially do. And what we found was that we started working less with just anyone and we started working more with a particular niche, which again is this B2B sales professional. Mm -hmm. um, and what's working for B2B sales professionals just happens to be LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So rather than trying to spend a bunch of advertising dollars on Facebook, you can win on LinkedIn without spending a dime on advertising. Mm -hmm. And that to me was like a light bulb moment Interesting. where like all of a sudden you realize, wow, I can capture attention and, and I can do it with no ads, no complicated funnels, no um, you know, expensive advertising costs that changes all the time, right? I can narrow down and have a fixed cost for what I do and I know my expense and I know how much attention I can get for that expense. Interesting. So you went from a business model that was essentially everything to everyone. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right? Yeah. To... Let's let's do LinkedIn and let's work with B2B companies. Yes. yes, because in my kind of marketing journey over the course of time, um, working in all these different industries from real estate to lending, uh, again, into this like software and, and the like, every strategy ends up being a little bit different. And I didn't know exactly what my client was going to want or need. Um, just had to iterate my way there, yeah. to be honest. One way or another, you're going to end up at a niche. Right, you should end up at a niche. Some people have that in mind before they start. My intention was to say, okay, I'm gonna continue to do this and I'm gonna really pay attention to what's working. Uh, and I'm gonna make sure that I pivot to that. So that's how we ended up in this angle is to say, wow, this this works. I can do it for the the budget, like within a budget. I mean, we can do LinkedIn lead generation for $99 for somebody. Wow. And that's kind of a, a unique angle too. It's just like, so imagine spending $99 and all of these, I mean, you would spend, I was spending two grand, $2,000 a month on a Facebook ad agency just to help me do ads. And they weren't even creating the ads for me. Wow. Like I had to then have our design team, our copywriters, like all these other things, create all of this content just to distribute, not to mention the actual budget of, of what we were doing. You posted an article called The Four Secrets of Lead Generating on LinkedIn. You started at the place where most people skip, which is the LinkedIn profile. Everybody listening is going to know that you need to have a good LinkedIn profile. But how important is your LinkedIn profile when it comes to generating an actual lead? Your profile is extremely important um, when generating a lead. Your LinkedIn profile is your sales pitch. So you have to sell with your LinkedIn profile without being too salesy because that also is going to push people away. So there is a tender balance on your LinkedIn profile um, where you need to have the right information, make your offer very clear and have a great headline, have a, a decent profile picture, make sure that you include um, a relevant description. I think the thing that people miss the most is they make their, all too often people make their LinkedIn profile about them. When what salespeople should be doing is using their LinkedIn profile and make it about your audience. Make your LinkedIn profile about either the pain that your audience is feeling and the solution that they perhaps should take or just about uh, as relevant as possible to where they're at in their life, in their business. So your LinkedIn profile ends up being an extremely powerful sales tool, but you have to transform it from being a resume into being a personal brand. Do, do you ever run into company owners, CEOs, you know, what, that, that level where they say, well, I don't need to update my profile because I have a company and people want to know more about my company than me. Do you ever run into that? And what advice do you give to those folks? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think you, you have a lot of experience with this because you deal with personal brands, right. right? So you get that a CEO that sits kind of behind the scenes to their company. I mean, that maybe that CEO is not in sales, 
Okay. And maybe they have kind of built relationships enough throughout their life where they feel comfortable with where they're at and they, they're happy to just not be visible Mm -hmm. on, on a regular basis. But attention is the new currency. And our tagline is if you can own attention, you can own the market. Now, a CEO that decides to just sit back and rely on their company, but does not invest in building trust with themselves, uh, does not demonstrate credibility first, which again, that's also the economy we're in, where someone almost needs to get something from you first before they ever buy from you. They need to uh, consume content first, and then they will make a purchase decision. And if you've ever read the book, The Challenger Sale, right, it talks about how People uh, statistically get about 52% of the way through the sale before talking to anybody. So they have already done the research now, and they're kind of taking that step on their on their own. So to a CEO I w- who wants to be invisible, I would say if if you can thrive in your career and be invisible online, then power to you. But to any salesperson, any sales CEO. At that point, I believe it's very important to be distributing content and uh, shedding light onto the life of a CEO grows a company. Now that you have your profile in place, the next step is starting to use LinkedIn's advanced targeting features. And specifically, you talk about Sales Navigator. For those who don't know, what is Sales Navigator? Let's start there. Yeah, sure. So LinkedIn Sales Navigator is one of LinkedIn's premium services. It is a service that you have to pay to play. It is a tool that you can use to more easily identify your target market. So assuming you already know what kind of person really wants to buy from you, LinkedIn Sales Navigator can tell you and show you a list of people that fit your target demographic, whether that be at certain companies and you're doing account-based marketing. It can be um, people with a specific job title, like let's just say loan officers or real estate agents, right? Um, And it can also be people of certain seniority or experience levels where you say, "I, I wanna filter down on LinkedIn Sales Navigator to a all C level people that could be CF, CFOs, CEOs, COOs, right? That have at least, let's just say, more than 50 people. I can even go geographically and say, well, now I want to filter only in Colorado. I want to see all the C level executives in Colorado on LinkedIn uh, that are a part of a company of more than 50 people. You can do that. And then LinkedIn now churns out a list. Not only a list of saying, here's how many people, oh, there's 10,000 of these people that match your criteria. You can actually see their profiles. You can click in and say, yep, this is the person I'm trying to get in touch with. Mm -hmm. That kind of targeting does not exist on Facebook or uh, some of these other platforms at that level. Um, Their title targeting is not nearly as refined. So we go through, we use Sales Navigator, and we find our ideal audience. So now we have this list of people. What do we do with it? Yes. So not only does it provide better filtering, but you can also reach out to more people. LinkedIn does, in fact, throttle your ability to connect with people you don't know mm-hmm. on the free platform. And uh, and there are limits even within the paid versions of the platform. Um, but reaching those natively is, you know, uh, it's not common, right? I mean, you can reach those limits, um, but you shouldn't. Let's just put it that way. You should not reach those limits because LinkedIn gets angry. What are those limits? I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I wouldn't reach out to more than 100 people a day. Uh, you can do much more. I mean, LinkedIn, I believe, allows up to like, what, 300, something like that. In the end, you even only have 30,000 uh, outbound connection requests per, per profile that you can even do. Mm-hmm. Um unless they've changed that. But to my knowledge, you only have 30,000. So in the end, you need to make sure that you're reaching out to the right people. Um, That's the only way it becomes worthwhile uh, as an outbound sales tool. Yeah. So do you send individual messages to individual people or does, is sales navigator allow you to send like one message to multiple people? No, you have to, you have to manually go to each person and share a message. You can do this one of two ways. The best approach is to Define your audience really clearly. 
know who you're talking to, make sure they're all very similar in demographic, and then coordinate what your message is going to be to them ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So take the time to write out something that you would say and have that in a word document, whether that be, you know, the introduction that you have, the fo- and also the follow-ups are really the most important thing. So every new connection, making sure that you then actually follow up with those connections and foster, like don't waste that new, that new connection. Try to start a conversation and do it in a way that's not going to turn them off. If you're just starting with LinkedIn Sales Navigator, the idea would be to work your way through that list and start with connection requests, right? Start with making an introduction and the more research you do ahead of time, the better. So if you really want a relationship, a particular relationship, and you're not worried about kind of scalability, then do as much research on that person as possible. Read one of their articles, um, If they're a CEO and there's been some kind of press release in their company, make sure that you identify that. And you can mention that and say, hey, I just read your recent press release on this. Thought your contribution was very interesting. Would love to add you to my network, right? Something like that. And then the follow-ups would be just saying, hey, thanks for adding me to your network. And I recommend usually a soft kind of introduction here to say, um, looking forward to seeing more content from you or looking forward to, you know, keeping tabs on, on what you're up to at that company. Very soft, not salesy. Sell the phone call, don't sell your service, essentially. We take the time, we get our LinkedIn profile cleaned up. We write it so that it's for our customers, not for us. We get on Sales Navigator and we start to really target in on who our audience is so that we can make those connections and start to build those relationships. The next step is that we start to create some authoritative content. First of all, what kind of content should people create? And then second, what's the frequency at which they should be releasing that kind of content? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Extremely important question. And the answer is it's extremely important to create content. (laughs) We have a marketing methodology that we call the FIRE formula. And FIRE stands for frequency, intimacy, relevancy, and efficiency. And this is kind of, it, it formulates how we think about our content online. So we want to be frequent. You want to show up every day, if possible, on that newsfeed. To somebody. If you aren't posting anything at all right now and you start posting, you're not going to get a whole lot of engagement. You're not going to get a lot of reach. But the more time progresses, um, the more you're consistent um, with posting content, the more people you're going to reach and stay in touch of. And it's really the modern day way of, uh, of just staying top of mind. Um, when you're posting, it's also very important to be intimate, to be uh, real, to be human, and to be relevant means simply to make sure that your message you're sharing matches the mindset of the person you're talking to. So if they don't know you, focus on the pain problem of their situation and kind of make sure that they really understand that before they start to see other kind of content, um, if possible. So generally I would say it's very important to, pro- to be producing content that dials in on pain because that's going to be what motivates someone to talk to you when they understand their pain. That's when they're going to want to find a solution and you can start to present that solution. And from there, you know, leading into, of course, uh, your solution and, and your service. So you mentioned that you mentioned, uh, two things, consistency and then posting once a day, which is going to scare a lot of people. Cause they're going to be like, Holy cow, that's a lot of work. Uh, one of the things you talk about in your article is that you can actually create 30 days of worth of content in 30 minutes. So tell me how you can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so how you create 30 days worth of content in 30 minutes, the answer is leverage. So take your own content, like let's just say a video. So, or a podcast is really relevant to what we're doing today. You take a podcast like the one that we're creating today and you make more content based off of this. This one podcast alone has so many quotables, has so many, um, so much information that would be valuable. And you break it down into a bunch of little chunks. You know, whenever you make a video or whenever you do some kind of thing, you can even take an article that you've written and 
take that and then break it down into smaller portions. But the, the short answer is take long form content and just break that down into micro content. How important is it to actually have a marketing strategy rather than just create content and kind of shoot it out into the world with, with like a shotgun? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, in, it's, a, it's very much a trick question because it's extremely important. I mean, if you are invisible, I'd rather have a shotgun. I would rather have a shotgun than to be completely dead in the water and, and not be saying anything. So if you are a business owner and you're just like, oh, I'm paralyzed, I'm not gonna start creating content until I have the perfect strategy, um, good luck and you're never gonna make waves. You're never going to get out there and you're never going to influence people. Um, so just do something. Something is better than nothing. Um, but of course, making sure that you are relevant and creating decent content, uh, it's an investment. It's an investment in your brand, it's an investment in your audience, and you're not gonna see the returns from that right away. So that's an, another thing that is really hard for business owners to understand. Um, you know, we, you and I create content like this podcast, we create videos, we create stuff for free, and we give it away um, for free. Valuable information that people could very well pay someone to be coached into. Um, but we do that because in the end, it builds credibility, builds trust with our audience and, uh, and it helps the people. And if you're saying nothing, you're not helping anyone. I would suggest that people not worry so much about having perfect content. I would say perfection is really the enemy of marketing in a lot of ways. It really will never be perfect. All you can really do is either get closer or farther from your preferences and be more or less effective in generating sales. move in to uh, talk about your company venture tactics because you actually help people implement all four of the steps that we talk about today, which is the profile, making sure that you're targeting the right audience, using sales navigator, reaching out to people, creating authoritative content, and de ultimately developing that marketing strategy. So tell me a little bit about venture tactics and how it is that you help your clients. Sure. Yeah. So we are, as I mentioned, a sales accelerator program that specializes in helping B2B sales professionals who want to get in front of other businesses, uh, who want to generate new relationships that turn into sales on LinkedIn. We help people become influencers on LinkedIn, right? In the sense of we grow your network with the exact kind of person that is a great fit for your business. And uh, and we serve them content that builds credibility and trust and authority without them having to really do anything. Yeah. And you do that through the, uh, I'm going to call it a vehicle, but your omnipresence engine. Tell me a little bit about what that is. Yes. The omnipresence engine. So essentially it begins with a choice with our clients of kind of where, where their budget is, where, um, they want to start. I mentioned we actually can generate leads for businesses for $99 a month. We can go into their sales navigator, define the audience that they want, and they have to have sales navigator in order to work with us. And we identify, do they want to get in front of CEOs or, um, are they trying to get in front of, again, lenders, realtors, insurance brokers? It doesn't really matter because LinkedIn knows who these people are. We dial in really, really tightly and we start reaching out every single day to these people. Um, and the, the degree that we reach out to these people, of course, varies um, based on budget, right? So um, we can do as little as just reaching out to uh, that person with a single connection request and just growing your network. We can do as much as uh, reaching out to 2,000 people a month, where we're literally reaching out to 70 people a day and going through that sales navigator list one at a time. And we just go through one by one by one connecting and following up with them on a schedule that we create. So we essentially predefine uh, what messages do we want to send and we tailor that message. So if we're talking to a mortgage broker, we will, uh, we will tailor the message to them. If we, uh, if that person is in Denver, we'll, we'll speak to that. If they're in San Diego, we'll speak to that. And uh, so every message is really unique that we do send, but we have kind of a, a baseline 
that we leverage. Um, and in a way, this isn't something that you can't do yourself. Anyone can do it. It's just extremely laborious. Think of making 70 cold sales calls a day and how hard that would be. Right. I'm sure you'd be able to get business if you made 70 cold calls a day. But um, then there's the follow-up. Well, how good are you going to be at following up, right? So are you going to keep track of the first day you connected and the next day, every single time I'm going to send them a message three days later, I'm going to send them another message and very gently and maybe four or five, six days later, seven days later, I'm going to send them another one, uh, introducing my offer. Um, are you going to be tactful enough to do that yourself? And we've kind of created a process and streamlined a, a way to get this done. And to those that kind of are interested in, in having content, we can do that as well. Mm -hmm. So, all that we're doing is trying to start that conversation, trying to get them to a position where your ideal client is comfortable with getting on the phone with you. And uh, we we normally suggest that our clients try to get them onto the phone call where they can then build that relationship further and make the close if they feel like they are a good fit. Awesome. Perfect. Tyler, this has been a very enlightening conversation. For those who are listening, who would like to learn more about you, like to learn more about Venture Tactics or the Omnipresence Engine, what are some of the best ways for them to get in touch with you? I would say, um, you know, we've talked a lot about relationship and that's exactly, we practice what we preach. Best thing, best way to get in touch with us is find me on LinkedIn um, and send me a message, right? It's LinkedIn slash in slash TJ Kemp. Um, if you want to find me and, uh, the second best way is go to our website, VentureTactics.com, and take a look at some of the resources there just to see if it resonates with you. If it's something that you would think, uh, would fit your business model, if getting in front of other business people and starting those relationships would, uh, be effective and we can start that conversation on, on chatbot. Excellent. Any final thoughts, tips, words of wisdom you'd like to pass on to anybody that's listening today? I would say invest in the long game. Do what you know you should be doing, even if you don't see the result right away. If you're producing content, it's not like it's going to magically just um, put a deal into your into your pocket in the first week. Um, it takes time, right? Nurturing relationships takes time. Content, any content strategy is a very long process um, of building trust. Uh, but those who invest in the long game win every time. Very good advice. Thank you very much, Tyler, for being a guest on the show today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Ryan. It's really a, a pleasure. And uh, thank you to everyone listening today. I think what I love the most about this conversation with Tyler is looking at LinkedIn through the lens of lead generation. Viewing LinkedIn in this way helps to emphasize the intent of the platform, which is and always has been networking. The definition of networking is the action or process of interacting with others to exchange information and develop professional or social contacts. I think you'd agree that is pretty much how LinkedIn helps. Unfortunately, many people still look at LinkedIn as a place to put their resume. If this describes you, you need to stop thinking about resumes and start thinking of LinkedIn as a place to have conversations, a place to share content, to build your thought leadership, and to capture attention. If attention is today's currency, as Taylor and Gary Vaynerchuk both say, then what are you doing to capture it? Is your profile still all about you, or is it written for your target audience? Are you actively searching for people to add as connections so you can build an audience and a network? David Fisher told us in last week's podcast that the best time to build your network is now, before you actually need it. Of course, doing so requires the same mindset Tyler spoke to when he said, do what you know you should be doing, even if you don't see the results right away. My business coach likes to remind me that my actions today will impact my bank account 90 days from now. Think about that for a minute. Tyler, thank you very much for your time and for sharing your tips with us today. I do believe that there is a takeaway for every single person listening. And speaking of those of you listening, if you're ready to up your game on LinkedIn and go from no to little visibility to capturing profile views and leads, I'm launching a beta program called the LinkedIn Messaging Roadmap on June 24th. 
The program will last seven weeks, during which time I'll share with you everything that I know about how to use LinkedIn effectively. So if you're interested in learning more, head on over to careerbrand.co. That's careerbrand.co. Next week, I've got a very interesting guest coming on the show to talk about how to turn your passion into a full-time gig. So until then, I've been Ryan, and I'm out. Today's show is edited and produced by Ryan Roten. The music is called Hudson Hawk by Neon Beach. License for the music in today's show was purchased via soundstripe.com.